And what's going on? It's your boy Fontaine, VIP SoundLab.com. And in this video, we're going to take a look at chopping and layering vinyl samples. I'm also going to show you a technique how you can beef up and reinforce your vinyl samples. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a vinyl sample that I have right here on my desktop. Now, the sample is called VIP Sample Drum to Chop. It's at 77.25 beats per minute. Now, I'm not going to worry about the beats per minute right now because I'm basically going to be chopping up a drum loop in order to make, you know, some nice little drum sounds out of it, you know, and make like a nice little group kit. And I'll show you how you can do that. The time signature and all that good stuff right now, I'm not going to worry about that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sample itself. And let me make sure I got that polyphony set correct, and I do. All right, so here's the sample loop that I want to do right here. Now, as you can notice, I was very selective with my drum sample because I'm trying to make a drum kit out of it, you know, just basically for personal use. OK, so basically with this sample right here, I didn't want the sample to be very busy with a lot of percussive sounds in the background or a lot of things going on. I wanted to choose a drum loop that was very easy for me to go ahead and grab some kicks and some snares and some hi-hats off of it. So we have the sample here. Now you immediately notice at the end of the sample it has some garbage on the back of it, but I'm not going to worry about that because I could just truncate that off. And I'm going to go ahead and truncate it like this, just as a good starting point. Now, if there's someone out there who wants to know how to actually loop a drum sample, let me go ahead and uh, show you that right quick. You have a loop icon right here. Okay. You don't want to be on one shot. You want to be on ADSR or AHD. So if I use the attack, decay, sustain and release, and I go ahead and bring that release all the way back like this here, this screen here is just basically a copy of what you have over here. You notice how the loop icons on here. All right. If you need to locate your sample on the zone map, here's your zone map. You have a plus icon here. So if you're, if you're digging in your hard drive, you want to, you know, drag some extra samples, uh, over in this little area here. And map them out you can do that you can right click you can map them as a drum kit it's up to you but uh for this particular video i just want to go ahead and get some drum uh you know some kicks some hi-hats and some snares but to loop your sample you just basically hold down uh your sound or your pad You know, which is also a uh, a very hot loop. And of course you have tools down here where you can go in there and go ahead and manipulate your sound. All right, so I'm going back to one shot mode right now. And basically, let's say if you wanted to chop up a sample, you know, again, you have different modes, like on your hardware controller, you want to use your third button. You want to go to slice. And as you can see right here, you have a couple of different modes. You have a slicer tool here. I covered this in uh, previous videos. You know, you can go in here and activate this icon and you can actually go in here and start doing slices manually like this here. Or you have a mode that's preset. Okay. Such as split. Okay. The split mode means that it's basically cutting your sample up into four equal distant slice points you have between four and 32. So the choice on that is up to you, depending on how intricate you want to get, you know, what you're slicing and chopping of your sample. You know, if you did want it like this, you would press apply and you have the option of using a pattern or not using a pattern. And basically if somebody doesn't know what that means, it just basically, it maps your sounds out. Like for example, let's say if I was over here on the grid, okay. On your piano roll, it's where it's going to get mapped out. Okay. Like, it'd be like, because what I'm doing is going to be completely different right now. But it's going to give you an example right quick. Let's say, I'm going to grab a couple of uh, sounds like this. Basically, what it'll do, it'll automatically map it like this. That would be like with a pattern. And when you press the play button, it's going to play your sample however it, it sounds. But again, that's something I'm not going to do right now. But if you were to do that, that's a good way to make some nice loops because you can take those sounds 
and actually move them up or down if you got you know different sounds on your uh your sounds here but uh what i'm going to do is a little bit different but before i get into that let me go ahead and show you some different modes okay you have other modes such as grid being that i don't have a pattern down there is why i didn't chop it up based on the beast per minutes that i have but if it you know if i had a pattern down there depending on my beast per minutes is how it would chop it up and that's really intricate and you have different slices again fourth eighth sixteenths and thirty seconds you know and you can uh you know go ahead and manipulate it that way another way is detect mode detect mode basically detects the biggest node events that's happening in your sample right now as you can see right now it's detecting the biggest node events or the biggest transient peaks which is obviously the biggest sounding kicks the drum hits right there now you can dial in a sensitivity on this for example if i was take the sensitivity knob here and let's say we want to dial it in, you know, make it a little more detailed, a little more intricate. As you can see right there, I picked up a slice point there. We got the guy in the back here towards the front. Now it's starting to get the hi-hats. So basically, the more sensitive you make it, it can detect the less, uh, or rather, it, it can detect the lower decibel range. That's probably a better way I should phrase it like that. The more sensitive you make it, the more transient peaks it, it can pick up. So it's basically going from the biggest transit peaks to the smallest, most finest transit peaks. That's probably a better way to say it. All right. So basically from that point, you basically can hit the apply button, as I mentioned earlier, and these sounds will spread across your pads, you know, but I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video here, being that I'm just trying to get drum kit sounds. And I just want to make you mindful when you do have your mouse like this and you're moving it through your samples. If you're at home following along, if you do this like this, look down at the uh, the pads on your hardware controller and just roll this back and forth. You'll notice how the pads on your controller will be lighting up and moving around. So if you're editing your samples from your hardware controller, make sure that you have your mouse a little bit to the side like this, because what happened is it might wreak a little havoc when you're trying to uh, adjust your your start endpoints. Which actually does bring up another important point. Let me. um. Go to split mode right quick. And I just want to show this also because this is another important tip to somebody who might be uh, needing to know how to overlap the samples. Now, being that we're on the slice mode, you have a button. Uh, let me see. That would be what the fifth button. You would hit that. You go into what's called your edit mode. OK, when you go into your edit mode, you have what's called your selection or your start and end range. OK. This right here is what you call slices. Okay, so this is slice one or four. This is two or four, three or four, and that's four or four. Okay, so let's say if I'm on slice one or four and I'm adjusting the end point like this. You notice how that slice point overlaps the starting slice point of slice two. Now slice two, if I was to adjust the start point, okay. I can adjust it like this or the end point. Again, you see me overlapping another sample there. All right, so that's pretty much how that works. I'm gonna put this back the way I need it. Or actually, I wouldn't even have to even worry about this because basically what I'm, what I'm gonna be doing is something a little bit different. All right, so I basically defaulted those back to basically the equal distance slice points. All right, so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna exit the editor like this by, uh, by re-pushing that button, which again is the fifth button, I'm going to activate or rather turn off the slicing. I'm going to go to the edit mode again. All right. So that's the second button. So basically on your hardware controller, it's going to be the same. Like this would be the first button, the second button, third button, and the fourth button on your hardware controller. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically, I'm going to chop this like this. All right, and, with, and without having to jump on my hardware controller and duplicate the sound, because you can't duplicate your sounds in your hardware controller, I'm just going to do it like this right quick. It's going to make a couple of copies. All right, and let's say on the first one, I'm going to grab that kick. Right here, I'm going to grab a hi-hat. And right there, I'm going to grab a snare. All right, so we have a kick here a hi-hat here and a snare here so the sample is playing something like
You know, it's playing something like that. But anyway, here's the kick. I had in the snare. Now, those sounds aren't too bad. You know, if you want to make a hip hop classic vinyl kind of drum kit, that's basically where that would be going. Now, you can right click here. You can save your project with samples and you can make a nice little group kit, label it. I don't know, hip hop classic vinyl drums. You know, then you might want to add some more drums. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to beef that up a little bit. You know, because a lot of times when I make music, if you get a good record sample, nine times out of ten, you can you can manipulate your drums. You can use different techniques. Uh, one technique I like to use a lot if I want to make it a, a little more punchy. Uh, I shouldn't be giving out some of the secrets, but some some things I do, I use like snap compression. If you're not familiar with snap compression, that's a good way to get your sounds a little more punchy. You actually can increase your transients, but at the same time tame them. So basically, you can get an overall louder. Uh, feel and sound it kind of plays with your ears it's uh it's a psychological technique i forget an engineer that i met in uh japan was telling me he was saying something about it 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 it, it makes it sound louder without squashing or distorting uh your transients and if you need a video on that just let me know just send a member request and i'll, I'll do a video on that it's called snap compression but anyway i'm going to beef these up another way you know because there's more than one way to skin a cat so let's kind of grab some sounds and Again, I'm still uploading my drum kit imaging here in my kits. You know, I, I try to get time to do this. Eventually, I have all my kits in here. But uh, let's go ahead and grab the newest drum kit. This is called the Ten Fingers of Death HD drum kit. Amazing kicks and snares. And I mean, like, really, really, really loud. Use a lot of snap compression on these drum uh, sounds here. As well as some other secret chamber techniques. But um, anyway, let's go ahead and um, let's grab a kick right quick. And I'm trying to be choosy right now because... Actually, I'm loving that kick. I'm looking for sounds that's going to match and fit basically what's in a sample because a lot of times when you stack and layer drums, a lot of times you can't just grab any old sound. I mean, you got to, well, I'm not going to say that, but you, you know, you, it depends how you layer it. It's hard to explain, but I know for me, I like to choose sounds that will basically fit the sample, match the sample to make it sound a little more authentic. But at the same time, I'm also trying to give it a little more modern edge to it. So, all right, so we got the kick. I put this on sound five, and I'll explain to you in a minute why I put that on sound five. Now, I'm going to jump over here to some hi hats. All right, this one ain't too bad. I'll grab this one here. And I'm just editing off some of the tails on there because that's when we were, we were recording it. All right, so let me get uh, a snare here. All right, I'm loving that drummer drum and snare. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that on like this here. All right, then from that point, what I'll do is I will go over here to my little icon here where I can go ahead and actually take a look at the sounds. Now, being that we have, you know, the kicks here on sound one, I'm gonna label this link group one. The hi-hats here, I'm gonna label this link group two and the snares here, I'm gonna label this on link group three now basically why am i doing it like that because it just makes life a lot easier in the long run because i immediately know that this is a kick here that will be on link group one sound six will be on link group two and sound seven will be on link group three so it follows a chronological order now later on down the line you know i might want to come back and add more kicks here some more hi-hats here some more snares here and some more percussion sounds or whatever here crash cymbals whatever the case may be you know you could lay it out like that that's one way you can lay it out depends on how you want to do it you know, then I could take it a step further if I want to make the kicks, let's say green. Like this here. We'll make the hi-hats. Let's say yellow. And make the snares, let's say orange. Or whatever. You know, just keep that format. Alright, now that the sounds are linked, you know, let's double check our work here. And everything looks to be linked up nice. Then when I tap on my pads, here's that kick. Now you notice how that kick becomes immediately beefed up because I'm layering it. Now I'll I'll worry about EQing and, and you know adjusting volume levels and all that at a later time. But for right now, just to give an example, I turn this off and go back to sound one. There's the original kick. Again, which is fine, but you know, you know, if you're making a track, you might want to say, I want to beef that up. You know, if you don't want to use any plugins or anything like that and get some immediate results. I feel this is a good starting point by stacking it, layering it. 
Zane with that hi hat. The original hi hat. Got that vintage drum kit sound to it. And what I did was I modernized a little bit. You know, I might want to adjust that start point a little bit. You know, there's different techniques. I, I could just use the tailing of it if I want it. In fact, if I just wanted to tail part of the sample, you know, and I'm blending that with my sound. There's different techniques for that. All right, so here's the snare again by itself. And if we want to turn that link group back on immediately, has a lot more snap to it. Again, if I want to just use the tail of that, eventually, here's the snare by itself. And we're adding this here on. You know, giving a little more vintage feel. And of course, at the end of the day, I always can come back, you know, and I can, you know, adjust my volume levels and, you know, my panning and things of that nature and run frequencies down, you know, the middle or the left channel, the right channel, whatever you want to do. Because with machine, you also can, you know, make duplicates of your of your sounds. And as you see right here, it's defaulting, it's panning them down the center. In other words, down the center of the channel. So you can go over here and you can pan sounds to the left and to the right. But generally, if I'm doing that nine times out of ten, I, I pan my bass. Uh, to the right, I make a copy and I pan another bass to the left. That's one way. I usually run my snares and my hi hats down the middle of the frequency, making more room for other frequencies so they don't get crowded. But that's a whole nother uh, story. That gets more into mixing and you know me jumping into Pro Tools. So yeah, man, that's pretty much it. It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. Be sure to come by the website www.vipsoundlab.com. We have a basic membership. It's only nine bucks which gives you a lifetime subscription of free drum kits, controller editor templates, session files, and more. We do uh, free machine tutorials, you know, with different tips and techniques. And, you know, we get you trained up on machine really quick. And uh, we do not charge uh, monthly fees each month. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or concerns, hit me up. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about the video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.